we actually are talking about three drugs that we've, we've, we've talked about more, but let's talk about three. Okay. We have hydroxyurea, crizolizumab, I got that right this time. Got it. And voxelatron. Are they all three working on different sites? Yes. yes. With different mechanisms? Different mechanisms. And Would you start somebody on all three? Well, and different toxicity. Right. Different, they're not overlapping, which is important, sorry. So now, well, those are important, like, so the way people say, we don't have, what we don't have in, and unfortunately in many drug trials, is long-term um, nat um, data on organ failure. The, I agree completely that, you know, I was going through this today actually clinically. If you, we know that severe anemia is, is a risk factor for multiple morbid complications. So I was discussing, you know, wouldn't we want to take that subgroup who have predictive legally low and um, start that group? population on it. it. And it makes total sense to me. What, what, but what is pointed out and what's plagued sickle cell for a long time is really the lack of very detailed prospective long-term outcome organ failure. But we, you know, that doesn't mean you don't do things to make them better. Now, I'm, all, I'm afraid to ask this question because I think I know the answer I'm going to get. But if we just take these two newer drugs, crizolizumab and voxelator, can we compare their effect on end organ damage, hemolysis, and death. To each other? Yeah. No, no. no I knew no. I was going to We don't have that. any of those endpoints. I knew it. Not, I knew yeah, it. No. Let me, let me <laughs> pause it. All right, let me, let me go somewhere else. Uh, if you take a look at the rheology of blood, right, the higher the crit, the thicker the blood, the more difficult it is to pump. And in fact, there's a sweet spot, which is well below a crit of 30, mm -hmm. where you have less myocardial oxygen consumption for adequate oxygen delivery, all right? So why don't we aim for a crit lower than 30 with sickle cell? I'm asking this for my benefit. Wait, in terms of what? Well, what do you mean aim, aim? I, I'm not aim? sure we need it because the voxelator data, or yeah, the voxelator data show that if you increase the hemoglobin, you're not increasing the amount of pain, which is uh, a concern, right? Okay. So patients with higher hematocrit have more vasoclusive crisis. Right. So it depends. So if you increase the hemoglobin, but you don't increase the the um, the, the osmolarity of the blood, then you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Right. But, and but in the trial, they, they saw, I mean, we, we think of hemoglobin, yeah, we think I of hematocrit. So let's translate well, a 30 care. to a 10. Divide by three but I mean, there were, there, were a significant number of pa there were a significant number of patients on trial, I don't remember exactly how many, who achieved hemoglobins of 11, 12, yeah. 12 and a half. Yeah. And again, as Jane said, there didn't yeah. seem to be any adverse. But let's keep in mind also that the study was done in people who are homozygous for SS disease. Okay. And so we have no idea, right? And, and probably would neither, none of us would think about using this in someone who had SC disease, right, yeah, without there, any. There are some S beta thals, but not, SCs were not in this. But I, I actually have a paper here at this meeting on the data you're talking about. So we did an ad hoc analysis of the group, and then we broke the patients with, with this drug into, um, stratified in, into hemoglobin levels um, after 24 weeks and looked at the groups going from those um, hemo hemoglobin group who had 12 down to those who only got eight, as well as occupancy on the drug. And as, the, and as we were referring to, in this post-analysis uh, data, what it showed was the higher the hemoglobin you went, actually, the lower the pain rate in that trial. That's what and, I was looking and for. And the occupancy rate went in the same direction. So there was encouraging, it clearly, what you can really take away from that data, though, is there was no the, it, raising the hemoglobin didn't make increase the pain. That you could definitely say from the drug. But you're telling me it actually might have decreased the pain. So yeah, I think because there were more drugs. What, yes, that in that study, it it clearly demonstrated it doesn't cause more pain, and it suggested pain rates would go down. Yeah, but right. you need a long term. But that's the answer I was looking for because if you look at this from a cardiologic perspective in non-sickle cell patients. Hemoglobins of eight are great. We're not transfusing till hemoglobins of seven. All comers without red cell pathology. They're not the same diseases when you look at hemoglobinopathies. For instance, in thalassemia, it really isn't a number. It's what the body has to do to maintain that number. And so if you have a hypermetabolic basal metabolic rate 
or you have ineffective erythropoiesis, so your, your bones are becoming it, or other issues. So it isn't just anemia that is the motivating factor. And, and the data you're talking about is sort of in the acute setting, right? Not transfusing right. people over seven. Setting, right. right. But it, uh, and look, this is chronic to put a, anemia. To put a, a cap on this, if I saw somebody coming in uh, with a hemoglobin of eight, uh, I would look for the cause, but I wouldn't automatically transfuse. Well, Here, yeah. though, but you've got it. This is a different animal, is what you're saying. And you've got data that shows if you get a better hematocrit, there's less pain. Mm -hmm. And probably. But that's because well, it isn't. Turning the, off yes. Right. It's because <laughs> the cells break apart, and these, and these hemolytic proteins and breakdown products actually upregulate everything else. So it. it isn't just your tank is at eight. It's not the numbers. It's the downside that. effect of those cells falling yeah, apart. Back, I, I love what you just said. It's, it's not, not just the number. It's not the number. It's, it's, it's what makes the number, right? right? It's the quality of the hemoglobin that is making the number higher. Wait, are you, are you actually, let me see if I understand this. You're actually telling me you have to look at your patient? Yes. and globally estimate how well your patient's doing? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Right, and it's yes. hemolysis, Didn't the release of... Didn't we get away from that with, with scans and free electronic hemoglobin, medical right? records and... Yeah. Yeah. Right, trying, trying to decrease the free hemoglobin, right, yeah. is one of the key things that we want to try and do, which is decreasing the hemolysis. I, I agree, and I think, I think as, totally as right more and that. more people start to use Voxelator, I think it's incumbent among all of us as, as experts to remind everyone what we've been saying here, is that this is not a drug to be, to be used solely for the purpose to raise the hemoglobin, but to decrease hemolysis. Got it. Yeah. Got and it. I, that, if you understand that, then you understand the utility. 